Let's take a look at the architecture of Sample Tank 4 and then the interface. Now, it's a 16-part virtual instrument on steroids, and I say steroids because it does a lot more than simply playing back multi-sampled instruments. So the way it's set up is like this. We have different parts in Sample Tank, and a part is a slot that contains an instrument. And here we see these several parts. We see eight right now. We can scroll and see all 16. And each one hosts an instrument. Now, the 16 parts all together as a whole comprise a multi. So each multi can contain anywhere from one to 16 instruments. Now, instruments are loaded by first clicking the instrument field in any of the parts. So as I hover my mouse there, I'll get this load instrument icon. Click there, and I'll get a window to allow me to load instruments, and that'll close it. Now we can also, if an instrument is loaded, click on the name here and that'll bring up the same browser where we can replace it. So each instrument contains multiple samples and often something called elements. An element is a set of samples that has its own volume, tuning, filter, and envelopes and other synth parameters. So an element can have up to six oscillators, each with their own unique tuning, volume, and pan settings. So just a quick review, at the top level we have a multi, which contains 16 parts. Each part hosts an instrument. An instrument is comprised of multi-samples and potentially multiple elements, and each element can have up to six oscillators. So let's look at the interface. What we're looking at now is parts view, and this is the main interface for Sample Tank 4, and it's the default view that you see when you launch it. So we can click on this note icon here to always return to it. So here's where we load instruments into any of the 16 parts. I'll click here and Let's go to the Sample Tank 4 library, and I'll just double-click one of these to load in the piano in this case, and I'll hit the X to close it, and it's loaded in, and I can play it. This is kind of like an overview window where we can adjust each part's volume, panning, the MIDI channel, and we can even save the result of all this as a multi. Now, let's look at the instrument browser. I can click on this to bring it up, or an empty slot, so now I can replace this instrument, potentially. And here's where we browse and load sounds, and we can refine the search using keyword filters. And we also have ways to filter what's viewed here. We can click on specific libraries, etc. And we click this to close it. Now we have the edit panel next. We click on the sine wave icon here to open it. And this is where we edit all the synth parameters for each of the instruments. I'm going to click it again to close it, and we're back at our main parts view. We have an effects rack we get to over here. And each instrument has five dedicated effect slots. We can click at the top of each slot to choose the type of effect we want. And we can click at the bottom to manage the settings if we want to save our own presets. And we can reorder the effects by simply dragging them around to change slots. Now, next, we have the player view with this icon next to it. And here we see four potential player modes. We have the arpeggiator, strummer, Fraser, and we have a loop manager when we're working with audio. And they're all used to generate MIDI performances based on either held chords or triggered notes. And the loop manager is used for independent control over pitch and tempo with audio loops. Now let's jump to the top. We have with this icon over here, the layer editor. I'm going to click that. And here you can quickly adjust the note and velocity ranges for each of the 16 parts at the same time as seeing an overview of all of them together. So we just simply drag these range bars to get unique ranges for layering sounds. And we can even change the trigger modes for how we want these triggered for using loops. And we can also click the instrument to bring up the instrument browser if we want to change instruments from this view. So here's that electric piano. I'll click there and there's the browser. I can change to something else if I want to. Now next to the layer view, we have the mixer view. And here, we have a DAW-like mixing board with four return channels for effects or bus processing. And we can click at the top here as well if we want to bring up the instrument browser and change instruments. And if I scroll, we'll see the four returns at the end here. Next, we have the live mode with this icon over here. And this lets us assign multis and individual instruments to MIDI program change numbers. And here, these multis and instruments can be grouped into songs for fast switching during live performance. And we can even set up a collection of songs, each with their own program change number, that can be stored as a set list. So let's go back to parts view here, and we'll look at managing the multis. 
Now we have the multi browser at the top here where we have some multis that ship with sample tank four and there's some old sample tank three ones. And we click on this to manage the multis if we want to save our own. So those are the main different panels and views. And there are some other controls on the interface. First, let me close player view here. And we're looking at our regular parts view. So at the top here, we have some transport controls for setting playback and clock and tempo, etc. And then at the bottom, we have a few. We have the MIDI connector icon here. And this opens a MIDI panel where you can view and edit MIDI continuous controller assignments for each of the 16 parts, as well as for the four returns. And if you look here, you'll see the 16 parts plus the four returns in the mixer. So we can control them, remote control them rather via MIDI. Now we have an automation host panel, and this is when we're working in the plugin version of Sample Tank 4, and we can manage host automation assignments here. And we have a panic button, sends an all note off message in case there's any stuck notes. We have the settings panel, which we looked at briefly for assigning the pathways, but we can also set different control numbers to browse through different parts and sounds and then to load sounds. So we can remote control the browsing and loading of sounds. And when we're working in the standalone version, there are also controls here for setting audio input and output in different hardware settings. We have a shopping cart icon, which will bring you to the IK Multimedia website. And then we have three different view buttons. Right now we're in keyboard view. And we also have with this button here, the macro view. And then finally we have virtual pads view where we can have anywhere from eight to 64 pads assigned based on the setup that we have here. And then we can view the different banks of pads here. So that's it for now. I'll see you for more in the next video.